Okay, maybe for some of you who joined the workshop yesterday, this already might be somehow familiar because Oli Peschel yesterday presented um, the workflows of the journal he's editor of, um, namely Atmospheric Chemistry and Physics. However, I think because the process is not so very common because we are basically the only publisher applying this process, um, it do, does make sense to, to, go, to go to it again. Um, some short background information for the beginning. So Copernicus was founded in 1988 as a spin-off of the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research, uh, which is now located in Göttingen as well, but used to be in katlenburg lindau which is a small town nearby. Um, it was initially founded to organize meetings for a learned society, um, and we, we, have, we still have two business parts. We still are a professional concourse organizer and an open access publisher. So in 1994, Copernicus started to publish its first, uh, its first journal, uh, which was a subscription-based journal at that time. However, already in 2001, uh, we started the first, first open access society journal. And I'm emphasizing society journal here because a lot of people saying, yeah, but open access, this is nothing for society publishers. And we do not only publish for learned societies, but the majority of our, of our journals are owned by society, uh, by associ uh, well, scientific associations, learned societies, or other scientific institutions. Um, yeah, in 2016, we published uh, 38 open access journal journals, mainly in the field of geosciences, but also engineering, some life science, and at least we have one humanities title as well. I'm proud of that. <laughs> and, um, uh, and we have a, uh, 18 access review discussion forums, which is part of this interactive public peer review I'm going to explain. So 30th, as I said, we mainly publish for learned societies and institutions, and um, therefore 33 of the 38 journals are affiliated or owned by societies and other scientific associations, and we barely own any journal of the ones we publish. Uh, we have 50 staff members. Uh, our offices are, are in Göttingen, and we have a, a consequent insourcing strategy. So we do typesetting, copy editing, image processing, editorial support, the, the whole online systems to conduct the review and publishing and distribution process. Uh, we have everything in house. Uh, furthermore, we are co-founder of the Open Access Scholarly Publisher Association. We are also a member of, uh, of another big publisher's trade association, SEM which is kind of often at NTOA, but nevertheless, they also have some positive aspects. And of course, we're also a member of ORCID. So I don't, what, what we do is we basically have a, a three-fold open access strategy, we call it. I don't want to emphasize on all the aspects of our open access strategy, but mention all these three parts. So basically, we have we are an open access publisher. All our journals are open access. All content is published under a Creative Commons attribution license. Um, we take care uh, about preservation in terms of working together with long-term e-archives and providing all the publishing process and distribution. But what I want to emphasize on today is uh, the open access to the peer review. So, because this is like a chance, you, you may, I think you only have an, 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 an open access publishing to take the peer review out of the black box it used to be in. So what are the problems which are frequently mentioned with regard to peer review? So review times are often extensive. The effectiveness is not because nobody can log in what, what happened to paper, what happens to paper. It goes in the publisher, then big black box, people you don't know looking at your work, and then something comes out with this accepted revisions or rejected, but you don't have any insights in what happened in between giving the document in and getting it back. So this is not all always uh, effective or efficient. And recently, but already also longer, because we are conducting our form of peer review, peer review already for 15 years now. 
So started in 2001 with the first open access journal. We already started the uh, interactive public peer process. Uh, but also researchers, researchers are calling for more openness. So the essence is other forms of peer review. Peer review are required. So what do we want to achieve with our interactive public peer review process? Uh, after rapid access review, we have a timely, timely publication of the author's manuscript as discussion paper, meaning that basically the editor has a quick, quick look on, on the paper, whether it meets certain quality criteria with regard to language, science, and of course, fitting the scope of the journal. And then the, well, the author's manuscript is getting a citation header um, and is published as, as the discussion paper. During the interactive discussions, the referee commands, which are basically the referee reports from referees which were um, nominated by the, the editor, the handling editor, are published openly. The, reply of the, the replies of the author, author are also uh, online accessible straight away. And also the scientific community is invited to join the process. The whole thing is designed to, to foster scientific uh, discussion and to maximize the effectiveness and transparency of scientific quality assurance. It furthermore enables rapid publication of new scientific results because it's all there, but it already has a stamp. Okay, this is the work of this author. And um, yeah, it, of course, at the end, it should make uh, scientific public publications freely accessible. So just to give you a bit more insights into the, to the process, it works like, of course, as for every other journal, there's the submission by the author, by the way, we are taking BIRD and but also we take LaTeX and uh, we provide also LaTeX and BIRD templates. <laughs> and um, then, uh, as I said, there's an access review by the editor. At this stage, the editor can ask for technical corrections or minor revisions, but nothing for nothing major. If it's not nothing major, he or she has to say, okay, we cannot take it for, for, for the discussion. You first have to work on, it, on that and then you maybe can resubmit. Um, as I said, and it's public, published as a discussion paper, so, but, may, but it's basically the author's manuscript which is published then. Um, referees have to post the referee comments and the scientific community can join the discussion. Afterwards, or ideally it should be really a discussion between the stakeholders and the authors, but it, Sometimes it's also the case that the, at, at the end of the discussion period, the, the author then refers to all things which were said by others. And uh, so this is like the first stage, which we call discussion forum. And then, I just, just check. The, um, um, okay, and then there are basically two two different ways of how, how, how it can be followed and it's some journals use one way and some journals use the other way. So for atmospheric chemistry, for example, so the original process was that after the discussion, the author prepared, prepares the revised manuscript, uh, which is then submitted based on what he or she gets as feedback from the discussion and then submits it, this again to the editor. Um, but that had some pitfalls because also we're confused if the referee reports were quite con contrary and they did not know what to change uh, in, their f in their revised submission and therefore we ha have another form which is no or now used by most of the journals which we have a post discussion editor decision so after the decision bef before the author submits a, um, a new version of, it, of his or her manuscript the editor provides advice looking at, at the discussion and afterwards, um, yeah. So the, the author receives more guidance. So in, the, in a second step, so after the public discussion, it is possible to have um, 
for the, or that they added to for the consults of referees. It can be either the referees who were taking part in the discussion already, but it also could be new referees, which could be nominated by the editor also in that stage. And if it offered the whole process is accepted, then it's published as, as, as a final publication in the journal. This is how it looks like approximately. So you, um, after the discussion is closed, so this paper has been accepted for, for publication in, in the, uh, in the journal, in this um, example, it's Biogeosciences, a sister journal of atmosphere, atmospheric chemistry and physics, so also owned by the European Geosciences Union. And you can see here, you can access really nicely the, the final revised paper, its supplement, the discussion paper, the supplement of the discussion paper, and you have the interactive discussion, which was not very big, but quite standard. So you have the, the both referee report and they're also replying to it. But as Uli said yesterday, we have some topics, for example, climate change, which is always a highly discussed topic. And there we have some sometimes 50 to more than 100 comments within such a discussion. So this is only yeah, one example. And what we also have is, if a paper is accepted, uh, most journals publish the his, uh, like all reports, uh, which are like closed in the process. So there's a second round of revisions, or, or any any revisions. But this is what we have here in the peer review completion. So you have the editor decision ED. You have the also response, and that the editor said some things again, and then the referee said some things again, and then there was another referee report, and you also can see that. Some of the referees reports are attributed and other are non uh, uh, they decide to not disclose their names. Um, to, so to summarize again, we want to achieve rapid scientific exchange. However, we would like to maintain thorough quality insurance also, yeah, which is also taking the functional elements from, from the traditional period process. The whole thing takes place prior to formal publication. Sometimes it's mixed like with post-publication because already one document is already published. But discussion papers are really rather preprints than formal publications. As Uli also said yesterday, it is somehow gray literature. Um, but you have a lasting record of scientific discussion. As I said, uh, reviewers can stay anonymous, but they don't also can disclose a name and we had, um, I conducted some research within our database like two years ago and we found out that at that time, 80% of the referees decided to not disclose their name while only 20% decided to, 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 to um, um, say who they are. But nevertheless, always the report is openly accessible and we think this is even more important than really signing, even though we're also in favor of, of signed referee reports. Um, as I said, the process meets the, the criteria of traditional quality insurance. Revisions are possible and only the final revised paper is really published in a formal journal. And another thing is we have quite low rejection rates especially after the discussion, because the discussion is really designed to enhance a uh, scientific work that it can be published. And, um, um, but most of the journals also have, I would say, pretty low rejection rates also prior to starting the process, but they are all really um, renowned in the community and also like have a high impact in terms of the impact factor we all don't like, I guess. Um, I also would like to refer to some recent developments. As I already said, it, oh, um, I don't know whether I already mentioned, because in the original concept, which was like developed by Ulrich and his fellows, fellow co or his colleagues in 2001, there was a possibility that also during the access review, you already could consult, or for ACP, for example, it's still the case <coughs> that you can consult referees already for the access review. But this 
lead or led to pretty much confusion because referees, which are not, um, yeah, no, the process is not known to them, and then they already submit the full report, even if they just should say, okay, I think this paper should go enter the peer review process. And also it prolongs the process quite, quite a bit if you always have to wait for, for the answers of the referees if you just want to know, okay, can I start the peer review process or not. The second thing this I already just de de uh, explained is this post-discussion editor decision to provide the authors with more guidance regarding what they should really change for, for a revised submission. Then also the post-discussion report publication. This is like all those things which are, which are taking place after the discussion that they are also disclosed after, after final acceptance. Um, a pretty big thing we did just recently, just at the beginning of the year. From 2001 till end of last year, it used to be like the discussion papers had their own online library and the final revised papers had their own online library. And of course, both were linked for every paper, but it was still that some authors then only no, whatever, cited the discussion paper because they did not realize that the final paper was already published and also were complaining, yeah, I, I'm losing citations to the discussion paper, how can that be? Because, for example, if the index was Thomson Reuters, Thomson Reuters is of course not taking the preprint versions, but it, they, they're just taking the, the formal final peer-reviewed things. So, um, we have a new appearance, a new database structure where the final article, or, or first you have the discussion paper, and then you have, have like a tab, which I can, I can show it also to you online, where, you, where, where it's written, okay, open discussion. And as soon as the discussion is, is over and the article is accepted, it gets to, this tab becomes a peer review tab, where you can, yeah, just see this record of the discussion. Um, another big change we provided also with regard, because um, the discussion very paper were somehow too formal because in, in, in the last years also had some difficulties to submit rejected discussion papers to other, other publishers because they said, yeah, but it looks so formal. I think they are already published. And, and they say, yeah, but it's not yet peer reviewed. So it's, it's basically, it's basically pre <laughs> um, Yeah. So, but we then decided, okay, would help also if, it, if it's also more from, from the visual aspect, more obvious that they're not formal publications. So we stopped typesetting discussion papers um, to emphasize the preprint character of this. Uh, and and with, it, with that, they do not longer have any subsequent uh, pagination anymore. And they're also not organized in volumes and issues any longer, which was also. And with that, also a new payment concept came uh, because in the original, model it was that because we had quite a lot of work with typesetting discussion papers and with the editorial pro process that um, authors only had to pay for the discussion papers and not for the final revised papers. But then Fanda also said, yeah, but if then a discussion paper does not become a final revised paper and we only fund reviewed research, we cannot fund the discussion papers any longer. So it was really complicated. And then before we said, no, that's, yeah, that can't be. So. We also have no, no, no argument anymore. If you don't typeset them anymore, we also have no, basically almost no work with the discussion papers anymore. Besides putting the citation header on top, which is done by a server generated PDF. <laughs> and um, therefore the payment now is as for all, all our journals which do not apply these, um, this process, it's, it's at the end upon publication of the final paper. Just really brief for the end. As I said, we have a threefold open access strategy. So the last thing is like, okay, we think open access 3.0 should be open science. And we try to, to also somehow educate our authors that to take open science as a principle. And we basically have a picture to say, okay, our, the gold open access article you have is, a, is somehow the trunk, 
but you have a lot of branches for that, so data sets, model code, scientific videos associated to the articles, samples, and other, we call them asset, assets as branches, and uh, to the launch of our new online library, we have the possibility to display these assets linked to, uh, like, accompanying the article and, and just form a publication cluster and not only have the article not connected with the other research outputs and underlying data. So, yeah, this is what I have. And ideally, of course, they should be linked by a persistent identifier. Thank you. Thank you, Senior. Do you have any questions? Yep. Yeah, the editor looks whether the, whether the submissions meet basic uh, quality criteria with regard to science, language quality, and uh, scope, or whether the contribution is fitting the scope of the respective journal. And there's a discussion the discussion as well. There is a selection, then there is a t the discussion taking place, and afterwards the editor can also decide to reject. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all the, the assets, like publication data, It's um, okay. We have, we have a data policy requesting uh, authors to deposit their data and, uh, have, and and making a data availability statement. But we at the moment we also allow if the if the authors provide re reasons or why he or she does not want to deposit the data, then at the moment we we do not. It's a requirement that they state something on that. And for the other assets, it's, it's an option. But, but our typesetting stuff, they are like screening the articles for DOIs or links, and then they're asking the also, hey, it would be nice if you could uh, make a proper reference on it, so cite this item in the reference list, make a proper citation within the text, and also include it in the asset hub that it's accessible for readers. You're welcome. So I noticed uh, during a presentation when the word uh, interactive peer review came up, there's a TM next to it. Does that mean trademark? Um, yeah, it's, it's, ma it's mainly, it, 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 it's just that, that this name is, uh, maybe, and, you know, you, you have a trademark, you can basically define yourself what, what you have as trademark because it's, um, it, it's nothing protected a trademark. But we wanted to uh, emphasize this term for this process, but it's not an R, so it's not registered. No. Yet. <laughs> and it's really only about the, the, the wording that if somebody, yeah, should. Uh. So, I'm, I'm not too much into that. It's not. Um, I, I'm not dealing with, with this kind of. Um, this is only what I know. But I, I could cannot answer this question. I'm sorry. So it's just not my, my part of business. There's a question over here. Yeah, the, the scientific community, basically the abbreviation SC is for short comment and basically everybody could post such a, such a, such a comment. So we have no restriction, it's like only they have to disclose their name and their email address. This is a precondition for posting the, and it, it, should, it should contribute to, to, to the science in the article, therefore it's mostly used by scientists. But, it, but, but from principle, also other people interested in the topic could say something on that. We would not restrict it to scientists. Uh, 
I think it's mainly scientists, I have to say. And there was a Yeah, so uh, we have several alert schemes. So we have RSS feed and email alert for new articles and also for new comments. So if you have an article you're interested in joining the discussion, you can subscribe to a specific comment alert and then you're alerted whenever comments in one subject area are posted to, to, to the articles. And this is also where the for discussion papers and final revised papers and the comments, you can subscribe to this alert. More questions? Yes, please. <coughs> I'm faster than you. Um, are you using some, uh, let's say, your own annotation engine or your own, let's say, solution, technology solution, or something like hypothesis? That is no, we are, we are using our own technology solution. We, the whole, every, Every online application we're using for the process, we program in-house. And we have our own IT department, and they are programming the system for us. But Maybe. does not answer your question, I see. Yeah, because uh, now I think about how you're going to have a lot of adopters, and let's say, so that let's say all players uh, will be aware about your solution and why they should use, for example, Copernicus and not some other, let's say, ecosystem, because now you're building your small ecosystem, so how do you see it? Just, just understand. This solution is really only for our journals, and, and it's, 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 it's uh, also used, it, it's not, not modular, it's, it's, it's like the, like you also wouldn't go to Springer and say, okay, I'm only using your production system, May I? So it, it's like, it's one part of our system. Of course, it would be nice if it would be used more widely. And of course, people are uh, invited to launch journals with us, of course. But also, uh, I'm also happy to provide our experience with, with others. It's, it's not like, but, but, but the code we are using, it, it, it's so, um, so much like programmed just for the needs for, for our particular system. Um, that I don't think it will be ever adopted by everybody. So it's, yeah. <laughs> Could I just ask you, uh, you, just, you mentioned that uh, time consume, uh, of, uh, I mean it takes a lot of time for peer review. Have you reduced time? As yeah, I think so. Um, so on the one hand, uh, people have their fir the first record of their work in, in, in um, um, in the form of the discussion paper, already online really quickly because this access review usually only takes a few days. Um, and the discussion normally lasts uh, six to eight weeks. And then depending on the outcome of the discussion, whether that uh, requires more submissions on, uh, more revisions or not, uh, of course it might, be, might prolong the process. But uh, we also have uh, on all our journal pages, we have a, um, we are displaying, oh, I'm sorry, can I want to do? Uh, we are displaying the, the length of the period process. And of course, it varies between journals. But I can just show you an example if you want. because we had, I don't know what, what their time at the moment is, I have to admit, I cannot. Um, so this is for ICP at the moment, for example. And this we are just playing for every journal, so it's quite transparent how much, is, how, much how long the process takes. And it's also, it's, it, it's updated every month and always refers to the medium of the median of the uh, 12 pre-sending. Uh, yeah. Month. <laughs> Period, yeah. <clears throat> Hi. Um, Hi. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned this before, uh, but uh, do you say anything about the costs of the publishing? 
I know it didn't, expensive? but I can. <laughs> is it more expensive to publish with this system or than regular so, peer review? We, okay. Um, okay, our article processing charges are, are based on a pay, per page basis because we say, hey, it's, a diff it's, it's different for us from, in, in terms of work, whether we publish a four pages technical note or a 30 pages review article, just in terms of typesetting and possibly also editorial support which is required for that. Um, and um, the journals uh, which apply the traditional peer review process are a bit cheaper in terms of article processing charges because this process requires a lot of editorial support, as you can imagine, because everybody's asking, yeah, but what should I do now? And, oh, okay, now this deadline is expiring, and yeah, because you have more steps, it's more expensive, but it's um, for 10 pages article in atmospheric chemistry and physics, you and you, um, so you would have at the moment, So you would have 900 euro per article, for 10 pages article, while you would have in a traditional journal, you would have 600. So that's, that's the span where we're talking of. And of course, sometimes it also varies between journals because as I said, we mainly publish for, for societies and some of the societies also want to uh, finance the outreach with the journals. And then they ask us, please add something to, the, to your costs. Um, for also gaining some revenue for, for the societies. Uh, that's possible in our model. Any more questions? I just have one more because yesterday we discussed quite a lot whether you should uh, disclose reviewer names or not and um, there were big discussions or I at least uh, heard some discussions about this and you said you mentioned that 80% in the survey you had made said Two years we, ago, we yeah. don't want to disclose our names. Uh, did you look into any patterns, uh, any reasons for that? Were they younger, elderly? Uh, Unfortunately research? not. It was really only, okay, it was really only an analysis of what, what we found. It was not like a questionnaire, You would you like? It was really just like, okay, we looked at our database and looked how many of the comments from referees had the name on it and how many not. And this was this 80-20 ratio at that time. But uh, yeah, it would definitely be interesting to go further into it and, and ask for reasons. Yeah, I and differences between disciplines or no? Ooh, that's also a good question. I, I should look into, into that as well. Uh, thank you.